You know, I spend a lot of time on this channel talking about great statues that are one-third scale, the monsters of my collection from, of course, great companies like Prime One Studio, but today I want to focus and give the love to quarter scale. Quarter scale, if you're new to collecting, that's basically one quarter of a person, and the great thing about quarter scale right now especially is the price point, at least for the most part, it's pretty decent. And then of course they don't take up as much room as these big beasts do. Now I'm going to focus today on sideshow collectibles. I am going to count down my favorite top 10 favorite sideshow collectibles quarter scales. Now of course I've got great quarter scales from um, you know XM, the Samurai line. Also I've got some great pieces from Tweeterhead. But today specifically I want to focus on sideshow. I'm going to be counting down from my least favorite all the way down to my favorite and I can't wait to do that with you guys and again I know a lot of collectors out there love quarter scale actually I think it's pretty much going to trend into 2024 again the price point with the economy the way it is I think that this is the way to go again even companies like Prime One are going to be releasing more quarter scales so I think it's going to be I think it's going to become very very popular here again in the next few years I really do feel like it is the favorite scale among collectors but again, me, I love the I love the big stuff. I like third scales, but quarter scales is what we're focusing on today. Again, my top 10 favorite sideshow collectible statues that I have in my collection. I can't wait to do that with you guys. But before we do that, if you are new here, please hit that red subscribe button and also hit the like button. That really helps with the mysterious YouTube algorithm. It helps other collectors find this channel and uh, grow this community that we're so proud of. So anyway, without further ado, let's get to the top 10 starting with number 10. All right, guys, here we go. At number 10 is the Catwoman Premium Format. This is actually one that is fairly recent to my collection, and I actually chose her over the previous version of her. However, after having the other one gone for a while, I do want the old one back. Uh, so if anybody is selling that one, uh, the one on the gargoyle, I am looking. Uh, please hit me up. But this one is still very good. Um, it just has some issues. Um, I love the paint application on the thigh-high boots. It's got that great kind of museum theater look, feel base. It's kind of simple. Um, this this whole statue really is just kind of simplistic. Um, but it still holds up, I think. But I feel like there are better Catwoman statues out there. Um, some collectors felt like her head was a little bit bobblehead-like. Um but I still feel like she is beautiful. She's sexy. She's got the great uh, medallion. I wish that that had been like actual medallion instead of just plastic. I think that they kind of uh, maybe went a little cheap there, but I still think this is a cool Catwoman. Uh, coming in at number nine for me is a very underrated piece. This is the Killer Croc, and I'm sure some of you out there don't, didn't even know this one existed. Um, but this one, of course, was done. There are some issues with this one as well. I wish that they would do a newer version of him, a much larger version. Um, obviously, this one had the fabric elements, which not everybody likes, and the the seam, which is just horrendous um, and unnecessary. So I covered it with the chain. I think it really helps. But I, I do feel like this is an underrated piece. It's still really, really well done, in my opinion. I just feel like it could have been done better. And again, I wish that they would sculpt him again a little bit bigger, uh, more like a Bane size, kind of a hulking character. Love the detail on it, though. The base is a little obnoxiously, you know, deep. It's a little bit too big, but that face sculpt on him, I think that's awesome. I didn't love the, uh, the crocodile face, but I love that portrait. I think they really did a great job, and I'm so glad they made him, again, really underrated piece for me. Uh, coming in at number eight is another beautiful piece. This one actually used to be higher on my list, but this is the Poison Ivy. And I think that's because I do prefer um, the flesh color, you know, the skin color uh, Poison Ivy. But I still think this one's really, really good. It took me a while to buy this one. Um, I think the overall aesthetic of this piece is really good. I think that the color of green could have been better. I think that that kind of is not great. But I do love the pose. Uh, you can actually have her a couple of different ways. Um, and she looks great. So, you know, multiple viewing angles on her, uh, very seductive, very sensual, very sexy. Um, I just think it, you know, all the S words <laughs> is really, really good. Uh, I love this particular angle right there, but she also looks great over the shoulder. Some people didn't like the muscles on her, 
but I still think she holds up. I think she still think she looks great, although I am more excited about that one uh, that's coming up um, here really, really soon. But uh, really great. Again, low ES on that new one as well, but love this one still. Uh, coming in at number seven, I actually thought this guy would be a little bit higher on my list, but this is the Bane sculpted by the incredible Daniel Bell, known for his incredible anatomy sculpting. Um, this one's great. Uh, I think it kind of gets lost in the shuffle just because there's so much black and gray on him, kind of like a Catwoman statue does. Um, just, you know, not as many bells and whistles in terms of color, but I think that they did a great job on the sculpt. That great rubber on the tire, although it's not rubber, it's sculpted really great. Uh, that torn up Batmobile. I love the fact that Sideshow did a little bit of gore on this with the uh, the bloody knees and the bloody knuckles, uh, the bloody elbows. Just really good stuff. A lot of detail, obviously, on the back that you don't always see. I think the tubes look great. His portrait looks great. Um, I still think that the old one holds up as well, that more that hulking version. But this is a more modern, realistic take. And I think, again, Daniel Bell did a phenomenal job. I'm really glad to have this one. Um, he, he definitely stands out. He's so massive. And, uh, again, I just <clears throat> I love this thing. I think they did a really great job on him. Uh, number six, let's move on to Harley. How could you not love Harley? This is Hell on Wheels. Um, the base, I, I, it's not good. <laughs> let's just be honest. It could have been so much better uh, with that kind of that fake neon effect. It's okay. Um, low profile, which is always nice, but man, she is stunning. Um, the skin on her, that, that, that pasty white, really good. Um, the bodice, her portrait looks great. I'm not as big a fan of the Jester portrait. I like this one better. Um, but man, just again, sexy, the bright colors, kind of that modern take on Harley. I know a lot of you really like the Jester, but this is definitely a modern take uh, with that skater look. I love that uh, she's up on her tiptoes. I mean, how great is the engineering on this? Look at that. I mean, how great is that? Um, again, multiple viewing angles on her. Not everybody might not like the over the shoulder look, and I'm sure they'll do more Harleys, but this one I still feel like stands the test of time. Really good stuff. Man, number five, I am so glad they did a, a Mr. Freeze. I was really worried they would never do him. This is that classic Freeze. And I know so many of you like the uh, the Prime 1 version, but man, this is this is it. This is it for me. This is the classic Mr. Freeze. He looks great. A lot of gray on this one, a lot of silver. Uh, the base is okay. It could have maybe been done a little bit better. Um, I love the Nora exclusive with the light up. It's really great. But what really stands out here is that blue, that pop of color that I'm so desperate for in my collection. Um, it just has that frosty effect and, you know, pun intended, uh, but just, I mean, come on. And then that, those piercing red eyes at the goggles, um, I just feel like they nailed this one. Um, it, it's sold out. It is absolutely, I, th I feel like an underrated piece. Um, cause when you see it in person, it's just, it really stands out and I mean, could it have been more dynamic? Sure. But I am so freaking glad to have this one as part of my Batcave collection, and I mean, you can't imagine a Batcave collection without a Mr. Freeze and Sideshow nailed this one. I love it. Now, this one is number four and this one is the OG. This is the original release that Sideshow came out with. This was the original license piece. And I love, love that portrait. Um, there's elements of the statue, though, that's very dated. Um, I still feel like the base looks great. Um, I love the attention to detail, but what where it lacks is the, the cut and sew. And if you release this today, the cut and sew would have been so much better, but it's starting to look older. Uh, will I ever sell this piece? Probably not, uh, just because it is so classic. It is Sideshow's first ever premium format uh, in terms of DC collectibles. And again, the, the clothing looks dated to me. It could be better, but it is that nod to the killing joke. Um, I just absolutely love this one. And obviously, again, that portrait, in my opinion, still absolutely holds up with all the other Joker sculpts out there. I, of course, am very excited for the Daniel Bell Joker, and I think that the, that one will surpass this one for me. I'm very excited to get it, and uh, I just love the creepiness of it, but this one, the OG, still stands up in my collection. Now, coming in at number three is another new piece in my collection. This is the Dark Knight Returns. Now, this, if you look at the Joker that we just saw and this one, you can see how much 
how far we've come, the level of sculpt, the the ballsiness that this took to create the statue. Um, this is phenomenal. This is a next level statue. Uh, the engineering, the light up feature, the, how dynamic it is. Again, this is a Daniel Bell sculpt and it shows. It is really, really incredible. It is really, really well done. And I'm so impressed with this piece overall. Now, as you guys know, I am not a giant fan of The Dark Knight Returns, but this, without a shadow of a doubt, Frank Miller, this is classic, classic Batman here. Absolutely worth the money. And I am so glad it's part of my collection. Um, I don't know how it'll rank for me in the next couple of years. It'll probably go down some because there's always going to be new pieces like the Penguin uh, coming out to the new uh, Poison Ivy, the new Joker. And, you know, there's always something new. But I still think that this one, I mean, look at this. It is so badass. It is so cool, so dynamic. And it is just a statement art piece in my collection. I love it. Coming in at number two, this one actually surprised me a bit because this is a character that I don't absolutely love. He's not a classic Batman villain, but this is the Batman who laughs. And the reason why I love it is because, again, it has so much storytelling elements to it and it's so massive. It is so dynamic and creepy. Uh, it has kind of this Hellraiser vibe. You know, it's just with the chains. It's fully sculpted, but man, they just absolutely nailed this one. The skin texture, the skin paint is just great with kind of those bloody fingers his rage face, the, the the leather, and it looks like leather, but it is fully sculpted. This, for me, is a extremely, extremely underrated piece. I think collectors are going to kick themselves in the long run for not picking this one up. So if you ever have a chance to see it in person, you, you will be swayed because it is really good. I know uh, even my friend Dan, uh, once he saw it, he had to order it because it was just, again, it's, it's, it's a lot cooler in person than you ever expect it to be. And it just has such presence. And that's why he's at number two. It surprises me that he's number two, but it's because he's that damn good. Okay. Now coming in at number one, drum roll is Scarecrow. Um, and there's so many reasons why this one is the number one right now for me. Um, again, this could change tomorrow, but it's so, just so dynamic. There's so much storytelling going on. The purple pop of color is incredible. Jason Todd coming out of the grave. The thought and detail they put into the storytelling elements to this base. The base helps make the statue. Um, it's, got the, it's got the grave. It's got the Jason Todd. It's, it's just it's everything that you want in a Batman statue. It's really good. Of course, Scarecrow is terrifying. The EX was just okay for me. I really like this portrait the best. But from top to bottom, it's dynamic. It is well thought out. The storytelling elements, the pop of, the pop of purple, um, man, I just, I'm so glad that Sideshow took the risk to do this character. I know he's well sold out now, but I absolutely love this statue. I'm so glad it's in my collection, and I don't know if Scarecrow will be done very much in the future, um, but I think it's one of Sideshow's coolest statues that they've ever done. I absolutely freaking love it. So there you guys have it. That is my top 10. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, how would you rank these statues? Uh, you know, how would you put them, uh, you know, in your favorite categories? You know, I would love to hear your thoughts and read your thoughts down in the comments down below. Again, this might change every single day. You know, the ones that I have at number five might be number four tomorrow. And, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but there's so many great pieces coming out and I'm very, very excited specifically about the, the, the addition of the penguin from Sideshow and of course the new Poison Ivy from Sideshow as well. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, they continue to kind of go along this and do some more villains. Um, I'm hoping that penguin is selling very well because again, I think the penguin is freaking awesome. So whenever I get those in, I'm going to have to do another top 10 list because I'm sure my list will change. But anyway... I just wanted to share that with you guys. I hope you enjoyed the content today. If you did, please hit the like button. Uh, also consider becoming a member of the Brotherhood of the Bat Collectibles. You can hit the join button down below. Um, again, thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart for all the members that have supported me over the years. You guys are incredible, um, especially helping out with the Bat Bunker project and everything else in between. So that project is continuing to go. And so hopefully, you know, we'll continue to pump that out and get that out to you soon so it is finished. I know they're working really hard on it. So anyway, thank you guys so very much for checking out the video today. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the Batcave. Bye, everybody. Continue to be good to each other. 
Hey guys, thank you so very much for watching today. And if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button right here on the screen and check out these two awesome videos. I think you're going to love them. And also please join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I would love to have you join in all the fun. Thank you guys so very much for watching. See you in the Batcave.